Can I bring a broken camera back to life and even expand some of its functionality from the stock camera? Stick with me and watch me give it a shot. Around four months ago, while exploring the Canadian wilderness, and specifically while photographing the Perseid meteor shower, mistakes were made. Basically, the screen went out on my Canon T3i, but everything else was just fine. I could even take photographs. The T3i is an older camera. I acquired this camera in 2012, and since then, this past August, I upgraded to the Canon 6D Mark II full-frame camera. But another camera body I purchased way back in early 2009 was a Canon T1i. This camera was special, however. It had its built-in white balance filter removed, or LPF2 filter. The advantage of that camera was its ability to capture hydrogen alpha and sulfur-2 emissions from faint nebula in the night sky, as well as to capture near-infrared photographs using special filters. Today, that T1i is really showing its age only 15 megapixels, rather noisy at even moderately high ISO settings, and unable to use large modern SD cards. But worse, a set of slowly declining batteries, a shutter curtain that experienced a sudden catastrophic self-disassembly, and a remote shutter cable port that doesn't work either. That T1i got a lot of love inside my observatory, but wasn't much good for anything else. The T3i, on the other hand, has been my workhorse camera for years, and outside of this recent mishap, I've been very good to it, and it has been very good to me. The T3i is much less noisy than the T1i, supports modern and SD cards and otherwise works just fine. So today let's fix that screen and as a bonus let's modify this old workhorse camera to replace my older astronomy camera. Now this isn't intended to be a how-to video. There are plenty of those for fixing screens and doing this filter mod. I'll link to some below but you'll get a pretty good idea of the procedure from this video. What I want to focus on is that I can do this and I'm terrible at this sort of thing and that means you can do this too. Articulate the screen to the side and remove two screws along the inside edge, and then two screws on the top and bottom of the screen, and that'll allow you to open up the whole housing. This will expose the circuit board that runs the screen, detach the two cables. After a few more screws, we can take the whole screen off and take it all apart. I prefer to reattach the electronics and do quick tests before reassembling everything. So there you have it, a shiny new screen. I bought this screen from Amazon for about $35 but it came direct from China and it took about three weeks to arrive. A month ago, I took this camera to the local photography store and they gave me an estimate of about $250 to do the work to replace the screen. Now on the shelf next to me in the consignment area was a used Canon T2i for just $250. So I would have been throwing money away on this old camera, but $35 in about 15 minutes worth of work seems way more reasonable. But like I said, I'm not stopping right here. Let's get this old thing ready to do some cool astrophotography work. So let's move on to the filter mod. On a stock camera, there will usually be at least one light pass filter. The purpose is to completely block all ultraviolet and infrared light from hitting the camera sensor. 
Another filter may be used, but in this case it's meant to balance the light curve to match what the human eye normally perceives. Extreme red and extreme blue light don't register to your eye as well, so your camera doesn't want to pick up these colors either. This also makes purples, which combine both red and blue light, seem more natural and lifelike. But these light pass filters also cut into some of the visible wavelengths that, while often too faint to see with your own eyes, can be recorded in your camera. Most of the reds you've seen in astrophotography are right at the edge of your stock camera's ability to record, unless you take out the light pass filter. With this filter removed, all of those red nebulae come in much brighter and more colorfully than they would with the light pass filter installed. And there you have it, a freshly modified astronomy camera from an old broken camera. Other uses for modified cameras like this might include ultraviolet photography, near-infrared photography, extreme low-light photography, sprites, and other transient luminant events, which I hope to have some success with this year. And I'm sure there are many other uses that I haven't even imagined yet. Examples of all of these things I may be bringing to you on this channel in the coming year, so please subscribe to see more. Now, especially if you have light polluted skies, it might be a good idea to install a purpose-built astronomical filter. The one I use is an astronomic CLS CCD installed inside of a bayonet mount made specifically for APS-C sized Canon camera bodies. APS-C describes much of the Canon Rebel series, the XXD series, and their Japanese or European equivalents. Okay, now for a first light test. Now this photo obviously won't win in any awards, but what's interesting is that I did it in the middle of the city, right next to a bright street lamp. This was a stack of about 50 20 second exposures taken at f2.8 while on my tracking mount. Notice the reds in the Barnard's Loop area, the Orion Nebula, and the Horsehead Nebula. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I want you to subscribe so you can see some of the future results from this resurrected camera. I've got some exciting new astrophotography vlogs, and a few science videos planned for the next couple of months. I hope you'll stay tuned.